so I wanted to talk about this about Ilhan Omar because a lot of the the uh, once again the emotional left is like yay Ilhan Omar is fighting Islamophobia but actually this this is an imperialist bill on Islamophobia and I'll tell you why and it's also very useless it's also very symbolic right so this she said scooplet this is uh, I think a writer for Huffington Post she said Ilhan and John Schwab Kowski are introducing a bill today that would create a dedicated high ranking official who would monitor and document Islamophobic incidents worldwide. The details here. And so I, I'm going to read a little bit about the, the bill from the article from Huffington Post and um, the federal government, right, would have a dedicated high ranking official monitoring Islamophobic incidents worldwide. And this bill was introduced by Ilhan Omar from Minnesota and Jan Schakowsky. And then uh, the special envoy for monitoring and combating Islamophobia would be embedded within the State Department and would monitor anti-Muslim incidents in foreign countries and document state-sponsored Islamophobic violence in the State Department's annual human rights report. Because the State Department is somebody you should really trust to oh, yeah. combat Definitely. Islamophobia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but okay, the report, which carries significant diplomatic weight, does not routinely monitor such incidents because they're too busy causing them. The bill, titled the Combating International Islamophobia Act and co-sponsored by Reps Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Oh, you mean the President Iron Dome AOC? Oh, interesting. Rashida Tlaib, Mark Pocan, one of the biggest freaking warmongers, anti Medicare for all, by the way, and Andy Kim, a Democrat from New Jersey, among dozens of other Democrats, comes at a time when anti-Muslim violence continues to rise. This summer, CNN reported the group was working on this legislation and HuffPost has learned it will be introduced Thursday. And uh, they quoted uh, Jan, as part of our commitment to international religious freedom and human rights, we must recognize Islamophobia and do all we can to eradicate it. That's why I'm proud to partner with Rep. Jan Kowalski to create a special envoy to put an end to this bigotry, she added. So this, I, I forget who said this, but this is what they, uh, they said that they united with, uh, I think that was Ilhan Omar talking about uniting with Jan uh, Shakowski. For over a decade, we have seen increasing incidents of violent Islamophobia, both in the US and worldwide from the genocide of Rohingya in Burma and U Uyghurs in ah. China to the attacks on Muslim refugees in Canada and New Zealand. Uh, Shakowski said in a statement, it is past time for the US to establish a comprehensive plan for combating this hatred worldwide. Pasta. What is there any evidence of the Uyghur genocide to this day? Have they produced any evidence? Right, not, not any credible evidence whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? Right. A lot of people we've talked about this numerous times. They don't times. know China at all, fam. They think it's about a Muslim situation when you know that's East China, but even West China. There's there's uh, Muslims living all over the place. You know, praying. You, yeah, their own, uh, yeah, yeah. You don't have to love China. Muslim. You don't have to be pro-China, yeah. but to make things up, that's the issue. And here's the State Department blatantly right the the Uyghur genocide and the Uyghur attacks and then the Burma too they bring up all this stuff and they talk about democracy and and per, like fighting Islamophobia well wouldn't it make sense to fight Islamophobia by s stopping our interventionism stop bombing uh, uh all these countries stop sanctioning them stop yeah. giving money to Israel to bomb Palestinians and Syrians wouldn't it be great if we just actually stopped fomenting some sort of uh you know, uh, opposition to Iran, uh, Iran, like all the time, like, or like, wouldn't that stop the Islamophobia? Yeah, yeah. Like, right? Like, it, but they're not doing that. And they're yeah. not going to do that because this, this is what they, they want you to think, oh, we care about Afghan women that, yeah, after, after decades of being engaged in, in, in war, and now we're going to send drones instead, you know, and, and this is, this is the issue to me. This is hypocrisy, right? Because this is what I said. I said, great. Now that all the bombing and sanctioning by the U.S. and Israel on Palestinian, Syrians, and West Asian countries will be marked as Islamophobic, they'll surely appreciate it as they and their loved ones continue to die, because that's exactly what's going to continue to happen. That's exactly it, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, a friend of mine, friend of the shows, fam, that you know we speak to that's living over in the Middle East, who said this to me before. He goes, "Listen, tell your fucking Karens and your bourgeois." Synthetic, synthetic left that we don't give a shit about the pronouns you use towards, towards us. We don't care what you call us or how you frame us or what you think about us. Just stop fucking bombing us, okay? Stop bombing us. I mean, I was about to ask, how many Muslim countries are we bombing right now that we're in? Iran, we're not in Iran oh, we're yet. We're funding Iraq, it via Israel, Syria, right? Syria, funding and Hamas, you know, uh, the Saudi bomb, Arabia. Saudi Arabia. I mean, all these countries, it's like, 
to bomb Yemen. You know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. So stop with the bullshit right now. And this, once again, fam, Ilhan Omar, they know their audience. They know how to emotionally goat them, put the care out in front of the emotional people. You know what I'm saying? The virtue signal is just waving there and they fall for it and stuff. Yeah, they do. Rather than stopping our American intervention, because what could be more racist, and I've said this for a long time, than bombing people in their own country, indigenous people in their own country, people of color, killing them right where they live and destabilizing their whole country and putting them to mass chaos, poverty, starvation, the whole nine yards. That right. is real racism. Not the fact that we're going to stop using our pronouns, right? They don't give a fuck. They right. just want us to stop bombing. What them. is bigotry? So stop. Your words, stop bombing people, stop yeah. killing people, stop creating terrorists that then you, you, you say, Oh, we have to eliminate them now. Yeah. No, like you created them, the CIA and, and you helped create them. Yes. The, like, our, you know, the military industrial Congress. like this is, this is not like, yeah. the, like anything new. This is what's been happening. It just irritates me because these people fall for this bullshit type of legislation that does absolutely Absolutely nothing to better the lives of the people we continue to screw with our sanctions and interventionism. And uh, notice she didn't mention India too, fam, real quick. Notice that she didn't do it because I think India is kind of with the State Department and our government yeah. is kind of on the fence. So India might be off limits right now because they might be a big adversary towards China. And since kind of Obama made a relationship with India, notice she didn't mention that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. I, was kind of, I was kind of when I was reading that thing, China's OK. Mention the Uyghurs and stuff like that. But, you know, you hear a lot of progressives and the leftists yeah. and the, they always talk about what's going on in India and whatnot, too, as well. But she didn't mention India because why? Because it's off limits for the State Department. You know who's running shit behind the scenes. Exactly. So this is a bunch of bullshit. And, and you know, you don't give credit here because it's a symbolic gestures, empty gestures to try to get people to feel like they care when they actually don't. So this is it's a reminder of the past votes of the squad. Mohammed uh, Mo Mystery said, while we condemn AOC for voting present instead of no on sending an extra one billion to Israel, Ha, have we already forgotten that Ilhan Omar and Rep Presley voted yes on sending unconditional aid to Israel not two months ago? Are they taking turns voting pro-Israel? Absolutely are. They absolutely are. That's what they do. Now, Samira wow. Khan, reminder, she posted this. AOC, Ilhan Omar, Bauman, Presley have voted to impose sanctions on Cambodia. Now, Cambodia obviously isn't um, in the same region, but guys, this is once again voting for imperialists uh, policies on uh, a country in the in the south and and then calling themselves anti-imperialists your anti-imperialist icons are lusting for regime change in cambodia that's exactly what this is we talked about this thomas massey rashida talib cory bush voted no and we talked about that and then here it is last week aoc and ilhan omar voted in favor of imposing sanctions in cambodia in march both aoc and omar voted to sanction myanmar against the the wishes of all of asia if you still refuse to believe they are enemies of the global south you are also an enemy of the global south and here again just minutes before the k uh at hm sanctions the squad voted on libyan sanctions and you can see how they voted yes yes presley yes talib no uh bowman yes Bush, no. Like I said before, when it's based on 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 foreign policy, Rashida Tlaib usually beats all of them, uh, and she's not even that great. But that's that's what I'm saying. Like this is, but they do take turns, right? They do take turns, and you can see that. And so it's it's really clear that people are finally seeing. Oh yeah, these people take turns. Yeah. Um, I, I think Cory Bush gets to vote like no on a lot of imperialist yeah. stuff. But yeah. then she's got to be like the anti-election integrity and right. whatnot. And she gets to amp up more of the, the divisiveness war and stuff like that. Like when she was going, the, the white supremacist president. Yeah. And I'm like, and then you have a picture with you talking to Chuck, you know, Chuck the schmuck and you're pushing yeah. uh, Biden. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Let's call it out. Let's be consistent. Biden is just <laughs> is a bigger white supremacist than anybody right now in office ever. I mean, Jesus Christ. He said he didn't want his kids growing up in a racial jungle. Literally. <laughs> I mean, Did you so guys much, forget he that? He wrote the crime bill. I mean, come on, the ladies and Patriot gentlemen. Patriot Act. I mean, yeah. uh, yeah, I mean, war in Iraq. The but they don't the look at substance, on. Pasta. They don't look at substance. They look on emotion. This is why we're calling them the emotional, emotional left. left. And again, let's not forget that Ilhan Omar just gave accolades to Margaret Thatcher. And here is Gordon talking about this okay he he literally made a video on tiktok and he's actually great at it uh highlighting why people in the uk want her to find other people to be influenced by and and to like so let's hear uh watch the video 
inspired her most to write it in a book, was the UK's most hated politician of all time. And that is undisputable, by the way. Kids outside my flat were singing Ding Dong, The Witch is Dead, when she finally kicked the bucket. But that's good enough to be one of Ilan Omar's political role model. Who's your sporting role model? O.J. Simpson? Remember, Ilan Omar's meant to be a progressive. She's a member of the so-called squad, which is also meant to be progressive. There she is, look, on the cover of Rolling Stone with another member of the squad, AOC. Nancy Pelosi. They call her Mama Bear, you know. Wonder who AOC's political role model is, eh? Saddam Hussein? She'd be in good company. Margaret Thatcher was friends with Pinochet. Margaret Thatcher is the mother of neoliberalism, something that Ilan Omar and the squad are meant to be fighting against. She was pro-death penalty. She was anti-divorce. One of the most authoritarian leaders we have ever had in the UK, and that's saying something. Her policies of privatisation and neoliberalism just destroyed the working class in this country and set the stage for subsequent governments to pretty much kill it off altogether. She even abolished free milk for school kids before she finally went too far with the poll tax and that finished her career off. And when asked why, Ilan's response is because she was a woman. More identity politics. More virtue signalling. No substance there. No word on policies or what good she did in the world. No. She was just a woman. But she got there on her own, you see? And she did all that without any help from a man. And that's what really matters. Slay Queen! What was, it? what was the last Slay thing? Queen! <laughs> Literally! They do this, though. Like, I, I mean... That was fire, fam. That was fire. I was, so I wanted to show it. And this is a perspective from somebody that lives in the UK that knows, you know, about Margaret Thatcher's type of governing. She's a neoliberal. She's like a, a classic neoliberal. How, as a person that's supposed to oppose that, and he, do you give accolades to someone like that? And then, of course, slap on the, oh, we're fighting Islamophobia, right? And, and that, again, this is why we have no friends in D.C. This is why we're still talking about these politicians, because people still fall for this bullshit. Stop falling for the bullshit. They're liars. They're full of shit. They literally do only do this for votes, just like Joe Biden, the Democratic Party. They run on things, right? They ran on they ran on free community college. We're going to expand Medicare. They're not doing anything at all. And this is this is once again what the squad is there to do to play into that. Oh, we're, we're progressives. We're it's just rebranded Democratic Party bullshit with a more woke language, but nothing of substance to actually change anything. And so um, it's all yeah. about personal gain too as well yeah. this is about the individual just climbing the ladder whatnot that's why they're like all of a sudden like you know a person like margaret thatcher the queen of neoliberalism and a lot of people even know this i don't even follow uh british politics that much but i even know yeah. about this woman too as well should not be someone who's like praised or looked upon whatnot she's someone that we the mentality of the exact person of who we want to fight against of why yeah. we put the squad in office and it's just a shame that they've gone away because why it's going to help their career oh and, the, and they can dupe people and they know the powers that be it's like hey if you do an interview with this person or if you praise this person whatnot we'll help you out and stuff because once again you're going to dupe people you're going to manufacture consent for the way people are treated you're going to manufacture consent for imperial and they won't even know what's going on because be so focused on what you do and what you wear and who you're about and your tweets and whatnot. Please, just exactly. Terrible.